Right, I've had very specific instructions from the customer. He's told me what he's already checked, and he's told me under no circumstances to recheck what he's already checked. So here we go. Hello and welcome to another budget and Lego video. Right, so we have a bit of a funny one, one that I wasn't really going to film because it's just a reversing light switch or reversing light light that isn't working. Now, I've got this car. Supposedly it's gone to a few different garages and also the guy that owns it has looked at it. That's all I really know. And I just assumed it was going to be something quite of easy. He said, under no circumstances, do the bulb. I've already replaced the bulb. I've checked the bulb. The bulb is fine. Now I put a brand new bulb in. As you can see, I listen to customers. <laughs> Their bulb did look a little bit dodgy. Um, and I don't know it, so I just said, I'm going to replace the bulb. So, I replaced the bulb. Their bulb wasn't fitting in there. It was really, really loose. My bulb's kind of slotted, clicked into place. So, replace the bulb. First thing, get all the information off the customer and then don't listen to them. <laughs> So then what I did is, I then went to the reverse light switch, because I thought, well, you know, they've told me, they've checked the reverse light switch, and it's absolutely fine. So what I've done is, I've turned off at the minute, but you turn the ignition on, and you just cross the reverse light switch, and that then should technically turn the brand new bulb we have in the back on, but it hasn't turned the brand new bulb we have in the back on. So, we've got a problem. It looks like a wiring problem. I've gone through all the fuses, Checked all the fuses. I'll show you how I've done that with the test lead. Um, and I've also checked the switch and I'll show you how I've checked the switch. So here's the reversing light switch. This was the second thing I checked. Let me just get this ready for, so I can show you how I check it. Right, very easy to check a reverse switch. Put your multimeter onto continuity or ohms, whatever you really want, continuity test is a bit dodgy in some times and especially don't test it for wires but all I'm going to do is, is this on camera just put my two probes on the pins and very simple press that's in can you see press it and that should now be beeping as you can see it's not this is why it's very very important not just to check the component you're working on also check the wiring because let me just no, that's the two things. That's what it should do, by the way, as I press it to complete the circuit. Um, you see, oh, keep slipping in together. I should have got my back pro pin kit, but anyway. Ah, oh, come on. Anyway, it's not working. Sometimes it kind of does, but the resistance is off the scale. That's what I was trying to get there. Is it? That's the probes touching together. Anyway, that's not working. So, another thing the customer told me not to do, and I did, and he was wrong. So, now I don't know if he checked it. He said another garage checked it and he's checked it, so I don't know exactly what that means. But this reverse light switch, gone. Simple, very easy to check. But this is why I'm saying it's very important not just to check this, because if you just check this first, you went, did it, did it, and it didn't work. You think, oh, okay, just the switch. Then you ring the customer and you say, look, it's just a switch. We need to get a switch. And then you put a switch in and you realize it still doesn't work because that jumper cable that I've got there is essentially replacing the switch. So not only am I testing the component that I'm working on, I'm also testing the circuit of the car. So we now unfortunately have an issue and the issue is a wiring issue. So we have checked the switch, the switch is faulty. The bulb we know is good. The wiring, well, the fuses we all know is good, but the wiring, that's what we don't know. At the minute, that bulb, when I turn the ignition on, should be lit, and it's not lit. So, we need to figure out wiring. And, with something like this, depending on what's been done with the car, 
it's a, it, like if the engine's just been changed recently, you don't know what if someone's trapped something or someone's done something. You know, it all kind of it all kind of gets a bit complicated. So what I like to do in cases like this is I work at the most obvious point where the wires can break, and I'll explain what I mean. Now, don't always go off this, but it makes sense. Just bear with me. So. If you imagine the wire is all bolted and clipped onto the engine and the gearbox, it can't really move. It stays there. You know, it's kind of fine within reason. By the way, I love this hokey meter. Hi, okay. Hi, okay. So, just like if you're working on a door, for example, there's a problem with the electrics in the door. Well, the first place to always go to is here because that's what always gets open and closed, open and closed them wires always move and if them wires always move that was just me checking the fuses oh i must show you how to check the fuses so if them wires always move that's the place to go to first so i'll just show you how i was checking the fuses because it's handy to know it's handy to know and it's very simple so we've got a test lead test light whatever you want to call it make sure it works so we put it on there and there and you can see the bulb the bulb Oh, there we go. Bulb lights up. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. So, we are now on battery negative, and I'll just turn the ignition on, and I'll show you how to check the fuses. Now, when you're checking the fuses, especially for what we're doing, you have to make sure your circuit is closed. Don't test it with this in if you know it's faulty, because the circuit will never close, it will never work. So, in this case, we are, we've turned the ignition on, we've put it into reverse. That's essentially opened the circuit to how it should be operating. We've then put that jumper lead in here. You can just see it here. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see that? Yes, you can see that. So, we now know the circuit should technically be working, but it ain't. So, just like if, you, if you're testing your headlights, turn your headlights on and then test your fuses because if you don't turn your headlights on it won't turn the fuses on for your headlights and you'll get a false reading so all we do is go on to the little uh, metal parts of the fuses once one end lights up like that the other end should light up too now if none if no end lights up that means that circuit isn't working or isn't you know isn't switched on but if one lights up and one doesn't then that fuse is bad because modern cars, well, modern cars don't have a lot of fuses, but, you know, they, they still do have fuses. So once one side lights up and the other doesn't, it's, it's a bad fuse. If you start popping all your fuses, even in an older car, you start losing memory. You can lose your radio memory. You, see, you can just lose all sorts, but there's no point. You just literally put it onto here. And if it doesn't light up on one side, you know, your fuse is bad. So that's very, very simple. Now... Let's continue. Right, so this is the furthest I have gone. I haven't gone any further with it. I just removed the airbox this originally just to get to the, um, the reverse light switch because it's easier. The reverse light switch in this particular case, let's just turn the camera light on. The reverse light switch in this case is just down there. So it's directly underneath the airbox. Um, and it was just easier to take the airbox out to get to it. So I've just taken the airbox out, taken all the covers off of the fuses and checked all the fuses. And we are now back to how we was. So let's see what we can find. What I've also done is I've also checked for powers and grounds up here and we're getting absolutely nothing. Because it's very important, you can get a ghost voltage. I've shown this in another video. Uh, leave your bulb in, your bulb is the load, and then test, you can test it here. I've done another video where I've showed you take out the bulb and you put your multimeter in and the uh the multimeter says there's battery voltage yeah soon as you put the load in it disappears so always test a loaded circuit with a load i was testing my loaded circuit with the bulb that actually came with it um but there's just nothing there it's just completely and utterly dead uh, this was all hanging down like this this these covers are missing i didn't do anything all i did is just un unplugged it from there so this is why i think other people have been at this i can see all this is hanging out again i didn't do any of that um but that makes my life a lot easier um so let me just well what i'm going to do is because i'm not going to be able to take you with me i'm just gonna again this is what i was saying before check the obvious things this thing is here is always moving a lot so if it's going to break anywhere obviously within 
the normal workings of the vehicle, and what I mean by that is no human interaction or animal interaction, it's going to go here first, you would have thought, because that's where it's always moving. The parts where the, the, the wires are all, you know, bolted down and clipped down, the chances of them just going is a lot more remote than where it's always moving, if that makes sense. Now, there's other things in play, you know, when people do stuff, humans remove engines, animals come in and, you know, make the little homes, all that, but I'm just talking in normal kind of circumstances. So let me have a look here, and then we'll see what we can see, and hopefully it's something fairly obvious, and hopefully I don't have to start taking half the bloody dash out to uh, find this wiring issue. And supposedly, a couple more other garages have looked at this, and he's looked at this, and no one can find it, so I don't think it's going to be that easy, unfortunately. Like, seriously, I just don't know what to say. Um, I don't know if it's... I just don't know. I, I don't know. I'm going to show you something now in a minute that I just think is absolutely ridiculous. Maybe it's because they're not doing what I explained. Maybe it's because they're not going to the obvious place first. Um, this might not be the obvious place for everybody because this is inside the vehicle and everyone thinks, oh, it's inside the vehicle, it's fine. No, this is a moving part. All the flex joints in the doors, they're all moving parts. Inside the engine bay, yes, I know the engine bay rattles, but it's not like moving like this physically moving. You know, how many times do you open the boot in your car every day? You know, it's kind of a common, or your door, it's a common, it's a common thing. Anyway, this is what I found. I just undone a couple of clips and look at this. R2 wires, just R2 wires, which is a little bit unusual. Um, I think it's R2 wires. We've got a black, uh, white with a black trace and a red wire. What have we got up here? Yeah, a white with a black trace and a red wire. I mean, how did they not see that? Now, I can't see, to be honest, where that was rubbing. That was, where was it? So that was in here like that. That was miles away from anywhere rubbing. I don't know how that's rubbed. I don't know if that's maybe more an animal because it's too far away from the wall or, or from the bulkhead or the hinge for that to rub. I would be expecting it to rub more here. Anyway, let me strip all this back and see exactly what we can find. And then uh, when we connect these two with our jumper lead in, that reverse light should work. Right, okay, so I've stripped the wires back and I've just, there's, there's a big chunk of them missing, but I've just put them together just to, just to test this theory to see am I right or do we have another issue? Because we've already realized once you test one thing, so we've tested one thing on the circuit, which was bad, which was a switch. So then you just assume everything else is okay, but you can't assume everything is okay because we essentially had two problems here. It doesn't happen a lot, but it just goes to show that it does happen. So, theoretically now, when I turn the ignition on, as long as that's still on there, which it is, this should light up the bulb, unless we have another issue. So, I'll put you on the bulb, turn the ignition on. Hey, hey, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. There we go. So, two issues on the same line so in other words we had the component gun which was the switch and we also had a wiring issue so the customer checked the bulb i'm not saying the bulb wouldn't work but it was a bit loose in there the customer and told me not to do anything with it the customer also checked the uh, and a garage supposedly also checked the switch and again he told me not to go anywhere near it and we proved the switch was bad so um yeah don't you just love customers? This is also why it's very important, well not very important, but it's just handy to keep the old wiring looms off old engines you get, or even old scrap cars or whatever. Um, ah, now I know which car this was out. Because of that, I now know this wiring loom is out of an insignia. This was already at the garage I was in, so um, yeah. And I could also tell this is an insignia because of the way they bolt it down where the injector go. Anyway, it doesn't matter what it's off, but... We have loads of different colour wires here. Now, you don't obviously have to put the, the same wire colours that you're repairing. We only need, you know, five, six inches anyway. Um, and obviously some would say that's quite important. But, um, hopefully, there's wires that are fairly, fairly close. I can already see a red one in there. Um, might just get a complete white one. I see there's some white ones in there. Anyway. Let me completely strip that, get the wires I need, and obviously, I'm gonna be using this bad boy, the Hobby Tool soldering iron. 
the wireless one, the lithium-powered sole and iron. Bad boy! I'll leave the link down in the description to that. These things are awesome. Irons, irons, let me strip the wires and see what colors I can get. I picked out my wires. I'm gonna use this canvas wire here. Um, the black one. What colors were the wires there again? Red. Oh, it was white. I went for black. Let me go for, oh no, hold on. There is a white one. Oh yeah, canvas one. So I go for this white one and this red one. And that will do me for fixing. Also, another good thing for keeping old wiring looms is the plugs on it. If you want to make pigtails for the plugs and stuff, like I've made loads for testing injectors and all sorts, you have all the, um, all the plugs and the connections off the old wiring loom. Really handy. What I'm doing is I'm cutting all the wires and I'm tinning them. I can't really show you doing the solder line, especially in the vehicle, because it's just, I have to get in the way. I can't get the camera, but I will do a separate video on how I solder. I use different techniques to what you see kind of a lot on YouTube, because I just personally think it's better, and I'll explain why I think it's better in a different video. Anyway, so I pre tin them, and I tell you, my 25,000 uh, pound bench is really coming in handy over the last few weeks. So there we go, pre tin them. I'm going to solder them into the car, I'm going to heat shrink and then I'm going to cut them to size because they are too long, um, tape everything up and then uh, put the new switch on and, you know, ship it. I'm going to show you some porn now in a second. Just look at the job this soldering iron does. I use a NASA connection. Just, just look. Oh, it's not focusing. Focus. Focus. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is. I'm just waiting for the comments. Oh, that's terrible. That's this. Believe me, that is a serious soldering job. So what I'm gonna do now is just heat shrink that, put some liquid electrical tape on it, heat shrink it. Okay, okay, this has to stop. <laughs> Not only did I get the right color wires, I also put the same color heat shrink on each of the wires. So, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, but I did it. Uh, it's gonna be really funny because the people that say I'm going, I'm going over the top, they're the people that say I'm not doing the job properly. So no matter what I do, but <laughs> I just like it. So they're all now soldered in. They're all the same length, so we can cable, not cable tie, but we can wrap it all back, put it all back in the uh, conduit wrap it all up. I haven't got the new switch yet, but I've uh, put all the wiring back and I've basically done it properly. So now we've got to see if it works. So I'm pressing the button, but as you can see, pressing this, but nothing's happening. Look at that. This switch, there we go. See, now it's working. Now it's not, now it is, now it's not. See? Right, I thought I captured it in the video, but I didn't. The old switch was intermittent, so sometimes it was working and sometimes it wasn't. Um, so that's why, obviously, when whoever checked it, they could have checked it when it was working. But when you keep pressing it constantly, it would be intermittent. But I thought I caught it on camera, but obviously not. So for someone who has checked that switch and checked the bulb, the bulb was, was, was faulty. The bulb was working, but it's just too loose in the socket. So that was, and that proves that the, also the switch is just dodgy. So this is why you need to listen to customers, but also not listen to them because, yeah. Um, now, come on. Right, we're all back, all taped up, all clipped back into place. You can see, see that's what I'm saying. I don't understand how that rubbed. I can understand it rubbing here, but I can't understand it rubbing where it is. So I don't know if something's got up there and chewed it. I, I don't know because it doesn't make sense how it's rubbed there. Anyway, wait on a new switch and we can finish this job. Right, I've got the new switch in, so I'm just gonna get someone to press the button and we'll see what it's like. Press it, off, press it a few times, on and off. There we go, boom, sorted. So just put it in and out a few times, yeah, back in, yeah, do it a few times. Yeah, it's working in the gearbox. Perfect. Reverse. Perfect. Off. Yeah, on a few more times. 
There we go, job done. So as always, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted. Turn it on.